Welcome back to Christian Questions with Rick and Vicki. Today, he is not here. He is risen. And we're taking no calls today. Thank you. Folks, we're telling the story of the crucifixion, resurrection, and results of Jesus' life. And Vic, our next section here is getting into the prayer that Jesus offers up on behalf of his followers in John 17. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory I had before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from this world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. I have given them your word, And the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. You have sent me into the world, so that I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one. I in them, you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see your glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and those know, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them And I will make it known so that the love which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. We'll continue our reading in Matthew 26. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. And then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going on a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to them, He said to Peter, Could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. 
Then an angel from heaven appeared to him to give him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples, and he said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing that this was to happen to him, came forward and asked him, Who are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup the Father has given me? But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him.